Hello there. My name is Willa. I am from London. Do you know where that is? Let me show you. It's all the way across the Atlantic Ocean in the country of England. I am so excited to go on this adventure with you and my friend Kayla. Over the next five weeks we are going to become citizen scientists. We will have lots of fun, as we learn why it's important for us to use all our senses and observation skills to learn about the world around us. I will even get to share with you a bit about my country. Shall we get started on our journey? Alrighty then, let's go. Hey Daisies, and welcome to the very first session of our Investigation Await series. My name is Kayla Roloffs, and I am the Youth Outreach Manager from Girl Scouts of Minnesota and Wisconsin Lakes and Pines. Before we begin today's activity, let's start with a Girl Scout promise and law. Is everyone doing the Girl Scout sign? Ready? On my honor, I will try to serve God in my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. All right, Daisies, for the next five sessions, we will be learning how to explore our world using our senses. For today's activity, we will be investigating the world through the eyes of different creatures. You are going to need at least two sheets of paper, a stapler, or you could use a hole punch and ribbon. You can use pencils, markers, crayons, colored pencils, whatever you prefer to draw. Before we make our book today, let's talk about observations. Do you know what an observation is? To observe something means looking at something very carefully, using all of your senses to learn something about our world. Do you know what your five senses are? How do you see something? What body part would you use for that? Point to it. Your eyes, that's right. How do you touch something? What body part do you use for that? Your hands. And how do you taste something? They're hung? How would you smell something? What body part do you use for that? Your nose? And then how about hearing? What do you use to hear? That would be your ears. Good job. All of our senses give us different kinds of information. So even if one of your senses isn't as strong as the other, you can still learn a lot about the world. Sometimes we're surprised at what we learn if we look at the world in a different way. For example, how would the world look to you if you were an ant? All right, girls. Now that we have gone over our five senses, let's spend some time using them to find clues. Eyes are one of our most often used senses. Instead of seeing where we are, let us use our other senses to try and figure it out. What did you hear? Do you think you know where we are without using your eyes? If you thought we were outside, you were right. Did you hear the birds chirping, or the cars passing by, or even the wind? This is the park in front of Buckingham Palace where the members of the Queen's family live. Think of some of our other senses. What do you think the flowers would smell like? Can you imagine how the grass would feel on your feet or the wind in your hair? Like pieces of a puzzle, all of our senses help us get a complete picture of the world. Have you gathered your materials for our activity? If so, let's get started. Today we're going to observe the world like different animals. Before we get started, let's make our observation book. You're going to take your two pieces of paper and then fold them in half, and you can either staple them together or punch holes and tie it with a ribbon. Then you can spend time decorating the cover if you want. Here we are at the London Zoo. 
the world's oldest zoo. While you work on making your observation book, let's take a peek inside at a few of the animals and see if there are any you want to try seeing the world through their eyes. Let's take a closer look at the penguins. They have very good eyesight to help them see clearly through the water and air. Here is a mother elephant with her baby calf. An elephant's eyesight is quite poor, but they do have a keen sense of smell, detecting water up to 12 miles away. Can you imagine smelling something from that far away? Even small creatures have well-developed senses to help them. Frogs have the excellent eyesight and sense of smell used for catching food and warning them of danger. Are you ready to start observing the world through an animal's eyes? Once you're ready, try to go outside if you can. Let's start by pretending to be ants. How would you observe the world? Try getting down very low and pretend you're really, really small. What do you see? Draw a picture of what you would see in your journal. After you're done with that, let's pretend to be birds. What would you see if you were flying through the air? Draw another picture. How about a giraffe? How would you see the world if you were up really tall? Draw another picture. Then last, you are going to pick the animal that you want. Show us your pictures on our Facebook event page. So here's an example of one way you might make your book. Um, you can decorate the cover with something that's important to you as a scientist. And then on the inside, we have a picture of what I might see as an ant. So I'd see really tall blades of grass and the ant hill in front of me and then maybe a big flower in the garden behind that. And then I chose for my animal what I might observe as a fish. So if I was in a lake around me, I might see some really tall seaweed, uh, maybe some bubbles coming up from below, and a fish swimming by me. Until we meet again, practice making observations like we did today. Maybe take a walk around your neighborhood or look around your house and see how observing something using your five senses can help teach you something new. That's right, girls. Try going on a sensory walk. If it's nice weather, take an adult and go outside. Otherwise, you can walk around your home going into different rooms. Pay very close attention to what you see, hear, and smell. What information do you get from your senses about these places? When you return, draw a picture of one of the places you visited. Think of a way to show the sounds you heard. If your sense of smell noticed something, how can you show that? Now that we're wrapping up today's session, share with someone in your house something interesting you learned by observing the world as different animals. I really hope that you come back next week to practice more observation skills by looking at butterflies. So for the adults, you're going to need a butterfly handout, which needs to be printed. If you don't have access to a printer, that's totally fine. Uh, just reference the sheet and you can hand draw them. They're pretty simple butterflies, so even if you're not a great artist, you should be able to copy them, no problem. Cheerio girls. And no, that's not a breakfast cereal. It is how we say goodbye in England. I'm looking forward to seeing all of your projects. See you next week as we continue on our adventure through our senses.